In number four here, we're talking about just a very general overview of one of the more famous economists, and that would be Adam Smith. Born on my birthday, June 5th, fellow Gemini like myself. Um, Adam Smith, he wrote in 1776, which is also the same year as the founding of the U.S., he wrote in 1776 a book called The Wealth of Nations. And the point of the book was actually rather simple. It just actually was concerned about, is it the case that, why is it the case that England at the time was so much richer and had so much more than a country like Portugal, which was poor? Like, what made one country richer, and what caused the other country to be poor? Now, Adam Smith is what we would call a classical economist. So if we compare that, Back to this earlier part of the lecture here, neoclassical. Neoclassical that we learn today, it derives from what Adam Smith did, but it's not exactly what Adam Smith did. It's kind of like version 2.0. Well, in this case, it's like version probably like 5.0 of what we learned today, but it's a revision of what Adam Smith did. So us talking about Adam Smith, if you forgive the uh, religious comparison I'm going to make here, it'd be like us talking about... Jesus, right, um, in this case, this is sort of, Adam Smith would be sort of the God equivalent, um, the creator in, um, in this universe here, right, because he created basically the discipline of economics that we know today. doesn't mean that there wasn't economics done before Adam Smith. There was, but it just isn't really represented in what we learn today. Um, just like, right, pagans and others existed before uh, Christians, right? Uh, there were other religions before Christianity, um, and we obviously don't see those religions in um, Christianity. So Adam Smith, um, basically who's called oftentimes then the father of economics, uh, maybe we call him the god of economics, wrote the book, 1776, Wealth of Nations, and the thing that he found that made a country richer than another is if they had policies that allowed labor to be specialized. The idea was that if you're able to focus on a single task, you become better at it. And you're able to produce more. So if you think about an assembly line or something like that, um, people who run an assembly line, you could ask someone to make an entire car from start to finish. But we're saying here is that, let's say you get like 15 or 20 people all building the same car, but they each have a smaller number of tasks. They're going to become really, really good at doing those small number of tasks. And as they produce more and more and more, it leads to more wealth. So, the reason why we're talking about this here is that we really do see specialization of labor in much of what we do, right? I'm an economist. I only teach economics classes. It doesn't mean that I couldn't teach other classes. It just means I can teach more economics classes than I can teach literature courses because I don't read literature in that kind of way or do that kind of thing.